Howdy. How y'all doing? I'm Nikki. And I'm Daniel. And we're going on an 11 day special mission on Amtrak vacation. So if you want to know more about DC, Boston, Chicago, New Orleans, and beyond, come, come join, join us. us. This is George, a continuization of the special report from Nikki and Daniel. Yes, on their Amtrak travel. This time, the five worst points, or the cons, of their Amtrak travel trip. So take it, Nikki and Daniel. <laughs> so unfortunately, due to the train strike that's supposedly happening with the freight trains right now, they have canceled our way home. So we are rolling with the punches and we got a rental car and we are going to hop in the car and drive through Alabama and Georgia and back to Virginia to um, get home. So what's our first stop for lunch? Uh, Bubba Gumps. That's where we're going. Going to Bubba Gumps. <laughs> Here we go. All right, let's roll with the punches. Howdy, Nikki and Daniel. Welcome to this Zoom meeting. Howdy, Howdy. Fearless. You know, in our discussions of the cons of this cross-country vacation, you mentioned that while you were in New Orleans, Amtrak might be going on strike. And because of this, Amtrak vacation, you know, your travel agent, informed you that they were going to cancel your trip, basically stranding you guys 1,100 miles from home. Tell me what happened. Yeah, so that's true. Uh, we, we were told by Amtrak that there was a strike going on. So we were lucky to take the train from Chicago down to New Orleans. But we knew that something funny was going on. Luckily, we got to New Orleans and we did our thing. We spent there a few days. And when it was time for us to, to travel back to D.C., that's when we got an email uh, telling us basically that the last leg of our trip was going to be canceled due to this strike. So we immediately called them and that's when they told us that, you know, we were on our own. That's not something that you expect from a travel agency. Wow, that's nerve wracking, isn't it? You know, so with that thought, what help did Amtrak Vacation Group give you guys to get back home? You know, did they find you some alternatives such as flights, a bus trip? Tell me what help they gave you. So when we called them, I wasn't really expecting them to pay for a flight or something to get us home because we didn't buy the travel insurance, but we were looking for some help from them to be directed maybe to hotels or rental Sorry. cars or, you know, give us some contacts of who we could work with. Some support. And unfortunately, when we got a hold of them, they basically said, we're going to give you your money back, but we aren't helping you at all because you don't have the travel insurance and um, goodbye and good luck. Wow. They're supposed to be a travel agency and it seemed like they didn't treat you like, you know, you're one of their customers. You know, so with that thought, would you travel again on Amtrak for a vacation? You know, hit the rails. Would you ever use this Amtrak vacation group again? I think... Traveling by train using Amtrak is good. So definitely, yes, it's a good and cheap way to travel. It's very comfortable as we've mentioned, but definitely that travel agency did not support us the way that we were expecting. So wow. yes to Amtrak, yes to train, but not through the agency. It's better to use, go, just go into the website and do it by yourself. Yes, I think we would definitely take shorter train trips. I wouldn't spend more multiple nights overnight in coach it just wasn't comfortable enough for that but short train trips absolutely it took the pain out of traveling um so definitely dc to boston would be a great one and just the shorter day trips is is a wonderful way to travel by amtrak yeah unfortunately because of this cancellation we were not able to review the the overnight um roomette that we were planning on so it's, it's unfortunate and yeah we, we can't give you any advice on that. <laughs> overnight uh, yeah. in a room <laughs> well thank you for showing me a lot of this video and of course we appreciate you going on this trip for us and and uh, explaining some of the pros and cons now what we're going to do from this point is we're going to listen to your cons of this amtrak group and this cons of this amtrak rail trip so thank you very much have a great evening all right thank, thank you, you. Overall, we had some really good experiences on the train. Yeah. Um, 
so not to take those away but we're gonna go now into our top five least favorite things about traveling by train yeah i think the first one would be uh, the, the the cars and some stations they really need an upgrade uh, yeah. some of them felt really old like 20 or 30 years old yeah so they were a little bit rickety um it kind of swayed and bounced a lot. I know at one point I got motion sickness, especially on this when you're on a two-story two story train. The swaying is a lot more than the one-story trains, and I got um, I had to go sit on the first floor for a while to calm down my stomach. Um, yeah, that that's connects to the second point, which is being able or being unable to sleep in coach class. Um, like you said, it's, it can be noisy um, by the train itself, mm -hmm. um, also by people, we'll get yeah. to that, um, but also uh, connected to the upgrade, like the lights, they're always on. Um, you really need to get, uh, what do you call the face masks or the... Coach. Yeah, so our second point is not being able to sleep in coach. It was definitely a lot easier than sleeping on a plane, <laughs> however, like you said, there was the issue of people getting on and off at every stop all through the night and they didn't care you were sleeping. So they would come in excited to be on the trip, loud and boisterous, and especially if they were sitting by you and chatting in the hallway, it just, it, yeah, it just wakes you up. Um, and, yeah. and you're not all the way back, so it's very uncomfortable. And that's why they need to upgrade the, the cars and the seats, because mm -hmm. although they are comfortable and wide, wider than an airplane, they don't go all the way back. So it's kind of hard to, to sleep on a 45 or 60 degree angle position. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. There's a button. That's it. Our third least favorite is the security of it all. Um, because they don't really check your tickets till the train is already moving, mm -hmm. which means anybody can get on. Um, there was a point where somebody got on to help their relative and then they didn't have a ticket. Yeah. One other thing that um, I found a security issue was before we even um, got on the train, there was a lot of non-ticketed passengers that were staying overnight in the train station. Mm -hmm and um, some of them were causing issues with the security, yelling at them and, and yelling at nearby passengers about crazy things. <laughs> Point four is about the customer service. And we noticed on our first train, um, the staff were very snippy with us. And it was early in the morning, um, but when we asked questions, we had never been on a train before, so we'd ask a question like what time the cafe is opening or something like that and we'd get very harsh response like... Very dry, very... you didn't feel welcome. No. And uh, they didn't feel... They, they felt like they were tired of talking to people, like they didn't want to, you know, give answers or they didn't... They, didn't they felt frustrated, but, you know, as people like us, which was our first experience, we, we get this kind of, uh, it wasn't really pleasant. Yeah, and I thought it would get better and it really didn't throughout our train trip. Occasionally you'd find one person who was really nice and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I like that, that, that train um, employee. But for the most part, they would yell at you if you stepped out of line, they, they would um, yeah. uh, tell you off if you went and sat in a different seat, even though you were trying to take a picture or trying to spread out a little bit, they would get mad. Um, they, yeah, if you if you wanted to sleep or go move to another seat, like you were saying, then all of a sudden they just pop up and and they ask you to go back to your seat, even if the rest of the car is empty, they'll ask you to go back to your seat and basically mm -hmm. not sleep on a different seat, even though the train was in motion. It's not like people were getting on. Yeah, so they, and they didn't do it nicely either. Yeah, and that leads us to our number one least favorite thing about the vacation was dealing with Amtrak vacations. Um, so this is the group that kind of sold us on our trip. They, you know, they advertise, spend 11 nights touring the country and there's pretty pictures and stuff. And you're like, oh, that sounds fun. And we clicked in it and. Um, yeah, that's a company that actually runs their website, apparently. 
because like you're saying if you if you find any flashy name that you're interested in and you start clicking on things on their website and and you start you select your your vacation the dates and everything uh, again it's not very customer or user friendly because uh, when we made a reservation we thought that we were booking a vacation with uh, you know several days and nights in, and in we a room as, we assumed that yeah. we were um, uh, getting a roomette or a room on the train so. because when we were making the reservation they were asking uh, how many adults how many, how many rooms? rooms they were not being specific or about like it's just for the hotel like they never said yeah there are no Places, rooms. Rooms so so we train. we assumed we had a room because we selected we wanted one room yeah. and we know that we're not the only ones who got their tickets and it says coach which is not a room it's mm -hmm. just a seat once again coach class in here to the left or right if you use the other door you can only go to this car you can't go any further and we were watching other videos of other people who have figured that out when they arrived to the train station. So we were lucky enough to figure it out once we got the ticket and it didn't say we had a room, it said we had coach. Um, but the website is not friendly. It doesn't let mm -hmm. you know that you do not have a place to sleep. It makes you think that you do have a room, you rented a room on the train. And um, yeah, so, we, so our issue started with that. We changed the trip because at the time we were having two overnights two nights in a row on the train for three different legs and so we changed our trip to be just one one night on the train they wouldn't give us a refund yeah but also remember or you have to take into consideration every change everything that you want to modify regarding your reservation they charge you right and and uh, he mentioned with train search strikes that also happened while we were in the middle of our vacation there was a train strike and they canceled the last leg of our trip which we were supposed to have a roomette for that and we were excited to review the roomette and the beds and sleeping in it but unfortunately they canceled it and when they canceled it they just sent an email saying hey your trip is canceled there wasn't a reach out to us they weren't trying to figure out what's tell us what's going on and so when we finally got a hold of them they said oh yeah your your money will be back in 15 16 business days but that's all they offered and they didn't offer help to um, figure out how to get home other you know we can call hotels and see if they can keep, like let you stay there was or no car rental company nothing they, they leave you to your own devices like this is sorry yes and uh, we'll refund you in 15 days yeah they don't they don't and care then, then you have to figure out yeah. on your own like you know if you're on a budget or if your credit card is maxed out and you can't you know rent anything then you're really left stranded yeah they didn't that, so that, the custom, there, there's no customer service that was our problem was our original refund hadn't even come through for the hotel room and then then we were expected to spend additional on top so we paid for the trip we paid for an extra hotel room and then we had to pay for a rental car and hotel rooms to get us and back gas home. And yeah. gas and that was all before we had ever even seen a refund so the cost really really added up and um, I think we've finally gotten one refund back at this point but we're still waiting for the last no, I finally got it oh you did but uh, so that's how we found out that it's a third party because when I got the refund it didn't say from Am Amtrak or whatever it had a different name from a different company or website and then for me I would probably do another overnight trip I would like to try a roomette out. It was super expensive. It was like eight hundred to a thousand dollars a night, so it's not cheap. But that also includes food. But I would like to do a roomette and try that out and experience it because I thought the train ride itself was fun and I enjoyed the trip with the family. But I guess as far as other trips, I would find I could find a better trip somewhere doing something else. It's not like I need to do it. I wouldn't be opposed to doing it. I also wouldn't be opposed to traveling across the country if I had to on train, if I was trying to take a bunch of luggage or something. Um, I don't think we will ever seek out another Amtrak vacation after our experience. Wow, what a crazy vacation that was. If you liked the, what you saw, remember to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment below. On behalf of the Phyllis Rambler, thankful that we're not going on another Amtrak vacation. Signing, Signing off. off.